Good afternoon. My name is Peter Hill. I'm an educator and I am the uh, language coordinator for Lakota Immersion Childcare. I work full time within the movement to teach and revitalize the Lakota language. So that's kind of different, right? Unusual, quirky, niche, maybe even quaint. There's a diverse array of world changers speaking here at this event. And then there's me, working with a language spoken by a dwindling number of speakers in a remote corner of this prairie state. So it's worth asking, why? Lakota language, Dakota language, who cares? I mean, someone out there is probably thinking it. So let's put that question on the table, front and center. I mean, this is TED, right? Questions worth asking. Native American languages, indigenous languages, lesser known languages, dying languages, endangered languages, Lakota, Navajo, Maori, Basque, Zumaya. Why do we care? Why should we care? What's so important about a language anyway? We'll return to that question shortly, but first, a little background on our program. Lakota Immersion Child Care, or Iapi Galukinipi, is located in Oglala, South Dakota, on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. I'm not going to go on about all the grim statistics generally associated with Pine Ridge, but if you're unfamiliar with the area, you can look it up via Google or Wikipedia. And then once you've recovered from that experience, you will have, some of a, you'll have a sense of some of the obstacles that we are up against. Um, because it's relevant to our subject at hand, however, I will quote you some statistics about the Lakota language. The following chart was uh, made from data compiled in 2003, 12 years ago. And it looked at demographics from the previous 10 years and extrapolated 10 years into the future. And uh, now it is 2015, and we are off the chart. And these trends have not changed course. The average age of a Lakota speaker is currently 70 years old. The average life expectancy on the Pine Ridge Reservation is 55 years old. The language is being lost daily, weekly, tangibly. We can feel it slipping away. We see it in the, uh, the obituaries of all of the fluent speakers from the elder generation who, um, who are the, the fluent speakers of the elder generation who are leaving us behind. For nearly 100 years, Native people were educated in the belief that their languages were like um, the rest of their culture in the eyes of the dominant society, dismissed as backwards, useless, counterproductive to the work of assimilation. Their languages were beaten out of them, as literally as that statement can be taken, for generations, and yet they survived. A language is at the core of a culture. It's the glue that holds a society together. But the damage from these wrong-headed policies had been done. The, um, the, the stage had been set, the seeds had been sown for the demographic collapse of the Lakota language. Next slide. It has been nearly 40 years since Lakota has been spoken in the home to children to any degree that could reasonably be described as commonly. Lakota-speaking kids are now so rare as to be essentially non-existent. And that is where we come in. In 2012, at the urging of friends, colleagues, and community members, I started a Lakota language immersion daycare program. Like so many other grassroots ventures and startup endeavors, there's nothing particularly special about me. 
I was just the person who finally acquiesced, took a deep breath, and said, well, guess I'm doing this. I had five kids at the daycare, including my own daughter, and no other full-time staff for the first nine months. The program was at my house, and it was the only language immersion daycare in all of Lakota country, and still is. Flash forward three years, we now have 20 children, eight full-time staff, and an actual school building in Oglala, which we rent from a local community elder. We have an adult second language learner education initiative, dozens of Lakota learning videos and animated skits online, an ongoing line of Lakota language children's books, even a running team. We are a partner program under Thunder Valley Community Development Corporation, a locally based Lakota run nonprofit spearheading amazing projects on Pine Ridge. Lakota Immersion Child Care is a diverse, multicultural endeavor, unified in the mission of revitalizing the Lakota language. We are Lakota people and non Lakota allies, first language speakers and second language learners, grandparents, and young adults. Our work is also constantly informed by best practices. What are the preeminent models of high quality immersion education? What does the research show about educating children of preschool age? What are the best approaches to teaching literacy in a language immersion setting? What about Lakota cultural competency and Lakota thought and philosophy? These are questions we must ask ourselves every day. Many believe that the end goal of immersion education is to get the children speaking the language, but in reality, that's only the beginning. True immersion education teaches in the language, but also includes a fully diversified, challenging, and age-appropriate curriculum. Math, science, language arts, all in Lakota. When our children eventually join the mainstream classroom, hopefully at fifth grade or above, if our long-term plans for expansion pan out, we want them to be at or above grade level in ability, more than ready to continue their education alongside their mainstream peers. In the end, we're not only trying to create Lakota language teachers for the future, certainly our children will be excellent candidates for such work in their adult lives, but we want them to be able to do whatever they want, knowing that they have the ability to speak their heritage language. That way they can pursue careers as Lakota-speaking architects, Lakota-speaking entrepreneurs, Lakota-speaking astronauts, in which their ability to speak Lakota is not what defines their aptitude for such work, but a core characteristic that no one will ever be able to take away from them. Thus, we seek to create well-rounded individuals rooted in their heritage and their Lakota community with no future closed off to them. And why specifically use the language as a tool to create well-rounded, highly educated individuals? Well. Many studies have shown us that indigenous children who learn their heritage language have a better self-image, higher confidence, and as a result of these intangibles, statistically lower dropout rates, lower rates of substance abuse, etc. In a place like Pine Ridge, like the Pine Ridge Reservation with such dismal statistics in these areas, the only surprise about immersion education is that it isn't being attempted more widely in our communities. And even that is not all that surprising, given that true language immersion education is very straightforward to describe, but extremely difficult to successfully implement. Take the issue of curriculum, for example. Teaching in, say, a Spanish language immersion setting has its challenges, but finding curriculum is not one of the major obstacles. In fact, most textbooks and workbooks for any grade level have Spanish versions that can easily be found online. We have no such advantage, however. Good Lakota teaching materials do exist, but these are intended for students learning Lakota as a second language in a mainstream setting and thus are not sufficient to our needs. Our full Lakota immersion curriculum must be created from the ground up, not only so we can use it, but also so that we can freely share it with others. And that's why we began creating children's books. Some of these are our own creation, and some of them are Lakota language versions of existing titles. We have also created Lakota curriculum materials, including tailoring existing resources to fit our program's needs. And most exciting of all, we are on the forefront of using technology as a vehicle for Lakota language revitalization. 
We have created numerous online teaching tools for children and for adult learners, adapted language learning apps for Lakota content, and created multiple video series, including animated skits. Shunka wambaluha. Hekta omakhon heha. Shunkbala wi chayuha. Shunkbala shak be wi chayuha. And live action shorts. Kokoyach anakiha dokel shna hot huhu. Bok bok. Bok 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 bok. Walk, walk, walk. That second little girl is really bringing it. I have to wrap up. Because you see that the core of our philosophy is the belief that Lakota is not just the language we used to talk about the distant past, about buffalo hunts and teepee village life and counting coup, although we can and do talk about such topics in Lakota, but our program sees Lakota as a living, thriving language, one in which we should be able to talk about fiber optic cables, plate tectonics, and astrophysics, as well as how to adorn a deerskin pipe bag with porcupine quill work. We at, immersion, we at Lakota Immersion Child Care don't view this as a dichotomy that's irreconcilable. Like Oglala Lakota College, whose slogan is education with tradition, we believe that we can keep the language and culture of the past alive while using Lakota as a vehicle to prepare young people educationally for a fast-changing world. In that way, we are bringing Lakota back from the brink, keeping the language alive for generations yet to come, while adapting it to the 21st century, from Unchimakha, Grandmother Earth, to the stars and beyond. So finally, to answer the question, who cares about Lakota language? We do. Fluent speakers and learners, Lakota and non-Lakota alike. And really, all of us here should. Languages are fundamental to culture and to success in life. They're not just some quaint relic. When we revitalize language, we revitalize people. And so, for the children of our program and for all the youth of the Pine Ridge Reservation, for their identity and self-image, for their educational attainment, their links to their ancestral past, and their path into the future. We care and we work. Lakota Iapiki Nikdelo. Lakota will live. Wopila Tranka Echichiapelo. Thank you.